Good morning, heroes. There's a bunch of folks in here to, this morning. So, yeah, those of y'all who may not know, Jeff's uh, dad is, is I, I don't know what his status is right now, but it's been pretty, pretty serious situation and had to be taken, metaflighted up from Ardmore to the city and go through some surgery and things. And so be sure and keep him in your prayers, if you would. Um, also, I want to mention to you all, and, and there'll be an announcement during the uh, during worship services, but uh, we had the young couple, Sam and Sarah Austin. Well, Sam had some kind of heart issue on Friday and uh, and had uh, had to be metaflighted um, to Oklahoma City and understand Sam's young. I mean, for us, most of us, he's young, 39. So, uh, and he's fixing to have to, he, he's had heart issues his whole life, but uh, he's about to go through extensive heart surgery uh, pretty soon. I don't know exactly when. They haven't scheduled it that Darla and I are aware of. So, but they've been married all of five weeks. So, that's a, that's a hard thing to have to deal with. So, please, uh, it's Sam and Sarah Austin, so please keep them in your prayers. So, um, it's great to see everyone. Uh, I kind of jumped into the tough stuff first, but uh, I know there's a bunch of you in here with Jeff not being here, so I'll try to try to keep your interest uh, a little bit. So, let's, uh, let's start with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we approach you now and Father, I pray that we are humbly approaching you, Father, seeking you, Father, that we recognize that you are the great and mighty God who created us and who loves us uh, unconditionally, sacrificially, Father. Father, you give us so much and so much that we don't even realize but father you give us you, you gave us your son and give us the salvation that comes through his blood and thank you father thank you for sending your spirit to dwell within us and and father to guide us father i pray that you continue to be our strength and help, again, help us to rely upon you and not ourselves. Father, I want to pray for Jeff's dad and for Jeff and his family. Pray that you will comfort them, uh, give Mr. Butler healing. Father, I pray that, uh, that well, Father, I, I don't have to pray. I know that you have your, your will, your hand in everything that's happening. Father, I want to pray for your comfort for Sarah, for Sam, and for that whole family. It's, it's, a, it's been a very trying time over the last few days and, and will be for the next several days, Father. And I pray that uh, you again give them your comfort, give them your strength. Father, I thank you for Southwest, for the folks that are here, that come here, that that are part of our our congregation. Father, I pray that we always will seek out as a body, uh, as individuals, Father, that we seek out those who, who need you. And Father, to give them, just give them love, Father, so that they can see their need for you. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> um, the last several weeks, those of you who haven't been in here, we've been studying sin. Uh, it was, I, I can't really tell you why, and I know, and those of you who haven't been in here, I know that's a strange, probably a strange subject to be studying, but <clears throat> it was good for me. I don't know about everybody else, but I. I got a lot out of it. So, but uh, last week I, we had a discussion, and and for a little bit, 
and, and I made the statement that I didn't know what I was going to do this week. And, of course, Jet comes up with, okay, I got an idea for you. And so, and that's what we're running with today. It's a great idea, actually. Um, we're going to talk about light and darkness today. Because it goes right along with what we've already talked about with, with sin. And uh, so that's, that's where we're going today. I want to start off with, let's, let's kind of define light and darkness a little bit. Um, I, I, let me define it, if you don't mind. Um, you know, what, what, is it, what is darkness, first of all? Darkness is the absence of light. That's all it is. Whenever you look in and you describe it from, from a physics standpoint, and, and I mention that because whenever I was in one of my favorite lessons when I had to take physics in college was about light and light rays and stuff. So anyway, but in a physics point of view, darkness is merely the absence of light. So it has no power. It's nothing. It is completely powerless. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Now, let's look at light. What is light? Well, light is not the absence of darkness. There's a big difference there. Because with light, you have to have power. There has to be some source of power for you to have light. Electricity fire, um, you know, just, you, you pick it, nuclear energy, I, I, you know, the stars, I don't know, but it all, there is power. There's something happening that's generating that power. That's how we have light. So, and the more power you have, the brighter things are, right? So that's, that's our first thing, is to realize that light and darkness are completely different. Uh, I mean, not only with what we see, but how you even define them. Because darkness is nothing. And we can look at that in... Uh, well, let me ask you... I will ask you all this. What's the first place that light and darkness are mentioned in the Bible? And during creation. You bet. In Genesis. You bet. So, let's go there. Um, it's just the first, uh, the first two verses, or first three verses, I guess. Well, several verses. Oh, I've got written down one through five. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So before anything happened, we had a shapeless, formless, void earth. I mean, it was, uh, the earth was without form and void, and darkness there was nothing there. Uh, I think void makes it pretty clear that there was nothing. And God provides the power. Right? On, I mean, from the very beginning, God is the source of power. Right from the very beginning. Now, let me ask you all this. Does anybody know where the last mention of light is in the Bible? I know because I looked it up, but anyway... Gail, do you know? I, I sh sure, it is. It's the last chapter of Revelation. So when we look at light, it was in the very first book ever written in the Bible. And, and not because Revelation is the last book of the Bible, but because it was the last book written, light is in the last chapter that's in our Bible, that was ever written. I think that's pretty interesting. And here's the thing. Let's go, down, uh, let's go back to uh, Revelation chapter 22.
And we're going to start in, uh, in verse five, uh, first one, excuse me, and read through verse 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its uh, fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. There will be no need of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. So, God was the power in the very beginning, and at the very last chapter, who's the power? Who's the light? God. Now, I wish that was my idea to, to figure that out, to see that. Brian actually helped me with that, to see that. But isn't that, isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? That's our God. That he's the light to begin with and the light at the, at the forever. He's our light forever, but in, in our Bible, he's at the beginning and at the end. I, it, I just think that's a pretty neat concept. And, and realize light and darkness, and those of you who've been in this, uh, been in this class, of, but we've talked about it, whenever, you, uh, especially when we were talking about Jonah, but whenever you see something that in the Bible, especially with the uh, Hebrew writers, when you see them going over something multiple times, it's important. Uh, in, in Jonah that talked about in, in the first chapter talked about him going down four different times and uh, and that had significance in, in Jonah 1 well light and darkness are throughout scripture so you think it's important yeah pretty much it's it's very important for us um, let me catch up with my notes here Okay, so for us, our question is, how does the concept of light apply to Christians? And we're going to have to look at darkness in, in this as comparison and things as well. Um, let's, let's just begin with a definition. Uh, I mean, I know we have the physical definition I've already talked about. Let's look at the spiritual definition of light and darkness. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 5. You know, I wanted to bring up this because when we're going to define something spiritually, where's the best place to go to find the definition, but in Scripture. And so that's why we want to look at this. And look at the one verse, uh, verse 20, chapter 5, verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So when we look at these three, we've got Evil and good, darkness and light, bitter and sweet. So what's darkness? Evil, bitter. I mean, it's all together. That's, you can carry that, that reasoning all the way through. It's evil. It's darkness. It's bitter. Whereas light is good, it's light, and it's sweet. So the good things, you know, we're talking about the bad things in darkness and the good things in light. It's what, what is in darkness is all bad. What is in light is all good. Um, and I think that's just as straightforward as it can be uh, as far as defining light and darkness. Uh, but let's go ahead and look in Acts chapter 26. This is 16 through 18.
But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those which I will appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you, to open your eyes so that you may so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Now this is Paul uh, telling uh, about his conversion and to put it into context. But, you know, in there, the same thing happens. We see darkness to light, the power of Satan to God. Darkness, power of Satan, light God. So we can define it by spiritually, we can define light and darkness by scripture. And and it's and I think that's that's something we need to keep in mind. Okay, let's go over to Ephesians chapter five. I don't I think we'll flip a few other places, but I'll try to stop asking y'all turn so much. Yes, sir. Yes, I think so, and I think that's where we're heading in in our uh, in what we're going to talk about. You know, what, what Jet was saying was, can we use the same definition? When we talk about darkness being the absence of light, can we consider darkness in a spiritual sense being the absence of God? And yes, yeah, very much so. Uh, I think it all goes, goes hand in hand. And again, remember, God is the power of our light. He is that source. I want to start off in uh, Ephesians, thank you, Jet, by the way, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, I want to read the first couple of verses, uh, it says, therefore be Im imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God reason why I wanted to read these first two verses because we're going to talk about some things when it deals with how we, how light needs to deal with sin or deal with darkness, I mean. But we need to understand, remember, and, and we've talked about this quite a bit during our class on sin. What's the first thing a Christian is supposed to do whenever he's dealing with anyone? Love them. You know, I... I always, I, I try to make a joke about how often I bring up uh, Matthew chapter 22, the greatest commandment. You know, what's the greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Or if you look at in Deuteronomy, it's might. And what's the second? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's so important that all the law and all the prophets are built on that. On those two commandments. So, I mean, that, and that's from Jesus. Jesus said that. So, and I know all of y'all have been in this, in this room, have heard that many, many, many times, and you'll hear it many, many times more. Those of you who haven't been in here, it's, it's my two favorite verses, to, or my favorite passage to read. So, so before we get into discussing how we handle darkness, because we're, we're going to be talking about some pretty straightforward language, I feel like. But I wanted to go back and look at how, before we ever get into it, Paul writes about love, that we're to walk in love. And so always remember that. Not that you don't. It's just a reminder. Uh, you know, I, I say before, and, and it's, it's so hard whenever you're in a group like this because I, I look around this room and I don't know, there's 125, 150 people in here, 125 maybe. Anyway, there's a bunch of you in here. And I see nothing but loving faces, honestly. 
because I know how you are. I, I know pretty well most of you. And, uh, uh, and I know that you're a bunch of people who love. So I know whenever I say things like that, please don't ever think this because I don't think you are a loving person or loving people. I just, it's just a reminder always. <clears throat> after, after those first two verses, then Paul writes about several sins, and I'm not going to go through and read those because, I mean, they're, they're sins and uh, they're, you know, we can get specific, but, you know, we talked about that when we were talking about sin uh, in that it's anything, we talked about how it's anything that damages our relationship with God. Um, it's anything that's disobedient. Uh, it's anything that where we are looking for ourselves and being selfish. You know, you, we, we can look at a bunch of different things. So uh, let's go down to uh, verse 7. And I'm going to read a, a fairly long passage here. It says, therefore, do not become partners with them, talking about the, uh, in verse 6, it talks about the sons of disobedience. And, well, and just right quick, um, it says, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So realize, we have the power in the light, but the darkness has the wrath of God. It's going to be the separation because that's where the sons of disobedience are, are in the darkness. And, and we'll, I think we'll kind of get into that here in just a minute. Uh, let me start over in verse 7. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you were light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as wise, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Okay. Um, you know, the, the first thing I noticed in this passage is, is we have another comparison about what, really, what is darkness and light? Wise versus un, uh, unwise. Light being wise, of course, and darkness being unwise. That's in verse 15. So throughout Scripture, I mean, we can see these things where it doesn't necessarily mention that wisdom is the light, but it's good. Again, good, sweet, light, that's, that's all light. Uh, and so in this case, wisdom or being wise. And unwise, you know, of course, is darkness. One thing I wanted to maybe have us discuss a little bit, because I struggled with this. In, uh, in verse 8, it says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Okay? It doesn't say you were in darkness, and it doesn't say you are in the light. It says you were or you are. You were darkness. You are light. What does that mean? And that is a question for y'all. I'm not going to try to answer that myself. I'm, well, I might give you an input, but I'm not going to answer it. When you were darkness, you couldn't do any good for yourself or anybody else. Right. The light that you that helps everybody come to light. Yeah. Uh, in 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 way to, uh, what Wade is saying is when you're in darkness you don't do anything for anybody else and when you're in light you're helping people come into the light. Um, it I I really struggle with this though and I and I agree with you Wade I don't I don't please don't take it that I don't 
But I really struggle with this because it says you were darkness. In other words, you were evil. You were evil. And, uh, and then he comes back and he says, you are light. You are good. And it took me a while to wrap my, my mind around that. What makes us... Go ahead, Jeff. Sure. And then now as Christians, we go along that and start saying, well, the whole Paul makes the same clear in Corinthians when he says that you used to walk in those ways, or whatever you know, like used to be right. but now as Christians we no longer do those things. Right. What what Jet was saying was is that when we were in darkness, or no, when we were darkness, not in darkness. And that, because I've, you know, I've read that passage, the Ephesians chapter 5, many times, but I've never rooted in on that we were.